Hi, this is Justin from Hotspot Nymphing, and today I have five fly tying tips and tricks that I use and you might find helpful too. The first trick I'm going to show you is an easy substitute for ostrich hurl. The answer? Marabou. Ostrich hurl works great and has a nice translucent effect in the water. To mimic that, I'm going to strip off a few strands of some nice fuzzy marabou from the end of the stem. I tie them in tips first so it kind of gives a little bit of a taper as I go up the fly. With the marabou you're going to want to twist the strands together and start wrapping them up the hook shank as if you were wrapping an ostrich up the hook shank. The marabou strands can be a little bit shorter than ostrich, so if you're tying a longer fly, you're going to want to use two strands of marabou, so you can double it up. Also, the fibers on the marabou can be a little bit longer than the ostrich, and if you're tying a smaller fly, you can simply just trim them down to any size you'd like. The next tip I'm going to give you is to buy white legs. Here is some white span flex. The reason I buy white legs is because you can always just color them to whatever color you want them. To color them, the technique I use is to place a small hook in the vise, or a big hook, doesn't really matter. Start some thread on the hook. And then take one of the strands, or you can do multiple strands at a time. Cut it off. Tie the very tip in to the hook securely and then you can take whatever color sharpie you want or other permanent marker. Here I'm going to do black and you can just run your sharpie um, while keeping some tension on the leg. You're just going to run your sharpie down the leg. And there you go. Now I have a black leg. I can tie a beetle with this or I can tie a black stone fly like a Pat's rubber legs. And there you go. Once you're done, you can untie your thread. And you haven't wasted any thread or a hook. And you have any color leg you want. In this next tip, I'm going to show you a cool way to apply glue to your flies. Here, I have a complex twist bugger in the vise, and I haven't whip finished my thread yet, and I also need to apply glue. So, instead of whip finishing, then trying to apply glue up on the thread, it's really hard to get down in there, and you're probably going to end up getting glue on your hackle and stuff. So to glue the fly, I'm going to take a little bit of glue and put it on my bodkin. And then I'm going to just apply the glue to my thread. Just enough 
to soak the thread. Now I'm going to wrap on the head. And now my fly is glued so I can whip finish. And then trim off my thread. And that's an easy way to keep glue from getting on your hackle for woolly buggers and also other dry flies. The fourth tip I'm going to give you is sometimes after you do some home improvement projects, you'll end up with some stranded electrical wire. All you have to do is strip off the casing of the wire and you have some nice, this is copper wire, you can use this to rib flies or make brassies. You can duct tape or just tape some, some a lot of the strands together and you can just peel off one or two that you're going to use to rib a fly and there you go. In this next tip, I'm going to show you four ways to increase your stimulator's buoyancy. I'm starting my thread on the hook, just like you would a normal stimulator. And I'm going to add a deer hair tail, just like a normal stimulator. Once we have the tail tied in, I'm going to tie in a piece of foam. This foam will go over the back of the fly and will eventually become a head on the fly. I'm going to tie it in. It has a little point on the end. I'm going to tie it in just at the tail so that it's sitting on top of the hook. Now I'm going to just tie in some hackle. And I'm going to dub the body. I'm going to do this one in green. Now I'm going to pull the foam over the dubbing and secure it tightly so it has a nice shell back on the fly. And I'm going to take wraps going up the hook shank, securing the foam all the way down to the eye or up to the eye. Now that that's secured, I can take my ha hackle and I can wrap it up the fly, leaving some space in between, and then I can tie that off. Now I'm going to tie in a deer hair wing just like you would a normal stimulator. Now that we have the wing tied in, for the second way we're going to make the stimulator float better is 
to add some legs. These legs will help the stimulator float upright, so the hook on the bottom, the wing up top, and that'll keep the wing from getting waterlogged because it won't go under the water. And I'm just tying them in at a V. I'm going to make a V on each side of the hook. Now we're going to trim those, leave them pretty long. They should have a nice V of legs. For the third step of making the stimulator more floatable, I'm going to use some poly yarn. I have a pretty thick but small clump here and I'm gonna tie it in on top of the hook in front of the legs now we're gonna fold both of the strands that we tied and we're gonna wrap our thread around both of them This is creating a small parachute. So that you can also see the fly on the water better as well. Now we're going to trim those off. Now we're going to go ahead and add some more hackle and some dubbing as the body and we're gonna finish off the stimulator. Now that that's done, we can trim off the foam to create a small head. The head will keep the fly from going under because it'll kind of push water and it'll keep the fly going on top of the water. The water will kind of just go underneath instead of going up on top. And we're gonna, now going to whip finish. And trim off your thread and now for the last step we're going to trim all the hackle on the bottom side of the fly this will also help the fly sit correctly in the water with the hook in the water and then the wing above it Now we have a really high floating stimulator with the foam, the legs, the poly wing, and we trimmed off the hackle underneath.